بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, now dear student it is time for examples on uh, friction uh, motion with uh, friction involved okay so this is our first example uh, we have two masses m1 which is 10 kg uh, on an incline and this incline is a rough surface okay and the coefficient of kinetic friction between uh, this Uh, material M1 and this surface is 0.25 and mu s which is the coefficient of static friction between the same two uh, surfaces is 0.5 okay as you can see mu s is greater than mu k for the same surfaces so it is lying there on that incline the angle of the incline is uh, 40 degrees with the horizontal okay attached Uh, to another mass which is M2 uh, through a pulley uh, and the string is passing over this pulley. The pulley is massless and frictionless as, as is always the case in uh, our examples. Uh, so this is massless and frictionless. Okay, massless and frictionless pulley. And the mass M2 is hanging, it has 15 kilogram uh, mass. Um, what we want here, would like to find what is the acceleration, and it is also given that the motion is in this direction, and there is an acceleration. So M1 is accelerated upward, and M2 is accelerating downward, okay? Would like to find the acceleration, find the acceleration A, It will be the same acceleration for both objects. They are connected with the same uh, string, unstretchable uh, string. So the same acceleration will be for both objects. Also, would like to find the tension, find the tension T in this string. Of course, the tension here will be the same as the tension there. Uh, this is because our pulley is massless. Okay? Uh, Let us start. Always, the first starting point is to do what? Guess. Correct. We should start by uh, drawing the free body diagram. This is always the first case in solving such problems. A free body diagram, um, I have two objects. This is M1, that is M2. The third object, which is the pulley, is massless, so we will not focus on it. And this. Uh, uh, chapter okay so I have to draw the forces along with the acceleration of this object the forces and the acceleration of this of this object let me start by drawing the forces acting on this object keeping in mind that the motion and the acceleration is in this direction okay okay here we have tension so the tension is pulling m1 to the right we have the gravitational force, which is always vertically downward. So this is Fg1 equals M1, M1g. Okay, what else? This M2 is lying on a surface, so the surface is pushing it upward with the normal force, and we call this as Fn. Fn is always normal or perpendicular to the, to the surface. Because the motion is in this direction, okay, we have, and this surface is a rough surface, where is the direction of the uh, frictional force? The friction force is opposite to direction of motion, okay? So it should be in this direction. So I draw it this way. Um, sometimes we draw it here at the bottom or uh, from the center of the object. It doesn't matter because Uh, all objects we deal with here are very small particles, okay? So we make it large a little bit just for our uh, convenience, but uh, you should keep in mind these are very small objects, okay? So I write here in this direction, Fk. Why did I write Fk, not Fs? I write Fk because there is motion, there is acceleration, okay? So The effective friction force is the kinetic friction force, not a static friction, because we have, we have motion. Okay, any other force 
no other force, and the acceleration is in this direction, okay? Uh, for mass M2, we have, again, the tension is always pulling the objects outward, okay? And we have the gravitational force, which is Fg2 equals M2, M2g, and the acceleration is downward, okay? Let me start with the first mass, which is M1. For mass M1, would like to write Newton's law. But first of all, I have to define the y-axis and the x-axis. As usual, we have this is my positive x, and that is my positive y. You can see that the tension is along the positive x, Fk is along the negative x, Fn is along the positive y, but Fg1 is neither on the x nor on the y. So we have to analyze uh, uh, F, Fg1, okay? So uh, this angle is theta, okay? So this is theta, the same as this angle, as we explained before. And this is the component, which is neighboring theta. So this is M1g cosine theta. And we have, this is the x component, which is opposite to theta, so it will have, um, it will have the sine. So this is Fk, and we have in this direction, M1g sine, sine theta. Okay, so I can get rid of this M1g because I have replaced it with the two components. So I have negative y component, which is M1g cosine theta, and I have a negative x component, which is M1g sine theta, and the acceleration is in the positive uh, x direction. Okay, I hope now it is clear. So we should apply Newton's second law for this mass, F net, along the x axis and along the y axis. Okay, so F net, let me start with the y axis, uh, equals M A Y, okay? But if you look at the y-axis, there is no motion in this y-axis. This means that there is no acceleration, okay? Acceleration is equal to zero. What are the forces along the y-axis? I have Fn positive, okay? And M1g cosine theta is negative in the negative y. All of this is equal to zero, so from here we get Fn equals M1g cosine, cosine theta. Okay, this is what we find uh, from the application of Newton's second law on the y-axis. Now let me apply Newton's second law on the x-axis for M1. Okay, so I write F net along the x-axis, okay, equals M A X. Okay, I have the tension to the right, so it is positive minus, I have these two forces to the left, so they are negative, M1, G, sine, theta, minus Fk. I am done with the forces. So on the left side, I write all the forces. To the right will be positive, to the left will be negative. Equal, okay, this is equal sign. The right-hand side of this uh, Newton's second law, I have to plug in the mass multiplied by the acceleration, keeping in mind what is the direction of the acceleration. The acceleration is in the positive x direction, so this will be uh, positive m a. Okay? But we know that f k, f k, we have studied this in the previous uh, 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 video, that f k equals mu k multiplied by f n. Okay, and Fn is there, we know it. So, this will be mu k m1 g cosine, cosine theta. Okay, so we have to keep this in mind and plug it, plug it here. And we'll find that T minus, or we can write it equal, this will go on the other side, uh, T uh, equals 
m1 g sine theta uh, plus uh, fk, which is mu k, m1 g cosine cosine theta, and don't forget ma, so this is plus ma. Okay, that is all I call it equation number one. Now I am done with the application of Newton's second law on the mass m1, uh, first along the y-axis, second along the x-axis, and I am left with this equation number, equation number one. Let us now proceed to uh, mass m2. For mass m2, the motion is purely along the y-axis, okay? So this is my positive, positive y-axis, okay? So I have the tension is positive y-direction, Fg2 is in the negative y direction, and the acceleration is in the negative y direction. Okay, so I apply Newton's second law along the y axis, ma y. So this is the general form of Newton's second law. Now I should apply it. So I have tension upward, positive, minus m2g, negative because it is downward. Okay, I am done with the forces. Right hand side, I should write the mass and the acceleration. Okay, so the mass is m2, and the acceleration is in the negative direction downward, so it is minus m2a. Okay, so I can write here that tension equals uh, m2g minus m2a. Okay, and I call this equation number equation number two. From here, you can see from equation number one, the tension is equal to this much, and equation number two, the tension, or the same tension, equals this much, okay? So the, the left-hand side is the same. This means that the right-hand side should be, should be the same. So I can equate the two equations as follows. So I have to write M1, M1g, I can take it as uh, a common factor, so this is M1 here, okay, this is M1, don't forget, okay, because this was uh, the application of Newton's second law on M1, okay, and this is the application of Newton's second law on M2, okay, so I have M1 uh, G uh, sine theta plus mu K M1 G cosine theta plus M1 A all of this is equal to M2 uh, G minus M2A. So let me write it. I have M1 G sine theta plus mu K M1 G uh, cosine theta plus M1 A. All of this is equal to M2 uh, G minus M2, M2A, okay? Here, if you look uh, and concentrate on this uh, uh, equation, everything is given and known except the acceleration. So let me uh, uh, bring the acceleration uh, in one side and any other thing in the other side, okay? So with little uh, algebraic manipulation of this equation. I'll uh, take this uh, uh, acceleration, put it in this side, and uh, all other terms will be brought to the right-hand side. So I am left with M1, M1A plus M2A in this side. Then uh, M2G was there. Then I bring all of these, these two terms. The other side so will be minus M1G sine theta uh, minus mu k m1 uh, uh, g cosine theta. I take g as a common factor, okay? Then, uh, dividing both sides with m1 plus m2, so I am, I am left with acceleration equals uh, this much divided by m1 plus m2, all multiplied by uh, g. As you can see, that dimensionally and uh, in terms of units, we are okay because here, uh, I have the unit of mass, 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 so it is kilogram, and uh, also here we have the unit of mass, 
and I am left with meter per second square and my acceleration is meter per second square, okay? By plugging in the numbers, uh, the acceleration will be 2.6 meter per second square, so this is the magnitude of it. And what is its direction? The direction is as shown in our, in our figure, okay? So this is the direction of the acceleration, and it will be the same for both uh, objects. Okay, what about mu s? Why didn't I use mu s? I, I have used only mu k, which is 0 0.25. I didn't use it because uh, we have the case of motion. This, the, our objects are moving, so I'll have fk, okay? fs is used only when uh, the object is at rest and not, not moving, in the case of static uh, uh, friction. Okay, let us go to part two, find the tension. I now, I know the acceleration. I want to uh, get the tension, so I can plug, plug the value in equation number two. Okay, so I take this value and put it there. So the tension will be uh, M2G, M2, which is uh, 15 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 minus M2, which is 15 kilograms multiplied by uh, A, which is 2.6. I put its, its value. And we'll find that this tension is equal to 108 uh, newtons. And this will be the same tension for both portions of the string. Either here or there, it will be the same, it will be the same tension. I hope uh, now you understand uh, how we apply the concepts of uh, uh, friction force and how to apply Newton's second law when we have uh, friction force. Thank you.